So uh, about two years ago, I came out as polyamorous to her. <laughs> out of the blue, I was just like, you know what? I think I'm polyamorous. And she was mad. <laughs> she was so angry. She told me to take a walk because she needed to breathe. Don't know why I had to go outside, though. But I did because I love you her. Like, you like being outside. Yeah, but you're the one who needed to breathe. So maybe you needed the change of space. But that's not the topic <laughs> here today, right? The topic here today is... Hi, roommates. I'm Demi. And I'm Ru. And if you want to become a roommate, you can sign the lease by subscribing and liking this video and checking out everything else we've discussed in the room. And you will notice that we've done this topic a couple of times before, you mm. know. But we were pretty naive to think that the message would get through in like one, two videos because it's taken us years mm. to have this conversation. It's still an ongoing conversation. So to think that we could cover everything in like a couple of video was just naive very naive mm. very naive mm. so thanks to someone who asked in our ask Rumi platform where you can ask us anything anonymously they wanted to know what steps should you take when you your partner randomly comes out as polyamorous mm. so as the monogamous person in this relationship i can definitely understand why you'd be having a difficult time when your partner comes out as poly but hopefully this video will kind of shed light onto how the situation can progress a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And less harmful. Yeah. And definitely. sad. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think the first thing I would say to a person who just found out um, that their partner is poly is to just breathe. Don't panic. Don't Google. <laughs> Don't ask random people on the internet. Just relax. Just mm. take a walk. Mm. A hike. Mm. So a nap. nap. <laughs> I think so I'm done. You're done? Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm just... Because you told me to take a walk. So yeah. I'm wondering why you, you didn't that's take... That's not the point. That's, that's our dynamic. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. And the reason it's important not to Google and panic is because if you go outside of you know the dynamic and you start asking other you know sources you end up getting like a lot of opinions and it can be very overwhelming which mm. just makes you panic more and you're just mm. drowning in all this new terminology and all these new new information and you feel like you're just drowning and it's just it gets worse it gets worse because mm. i've witnessed this yeah, you know yeah. i would think she is fine i go to sleep in the middle of the night person's having an entire breakdown and i'm like what happened she's like i read something on google and i'll just be so angry i'll just mm. be so mad mm. because i guess at that time i really just wanted to understand this a bit more yeah and instead of going to you and asking you i thought maybe you know i would go onto the internet and read some books um join a few forums hear what other people had to say but I guess at some point I, I learned through like a very long, difficult process of just fighting with you that <laughs> when someone comes out as being polyamorous, you can't just take um, the preconceived notions of what that means or the experiences of other people and apply that to your partner. Definitely. They're not the same. It's not one thing. Not everyone is the same monogamously and not everyone is the same when they're polyamorous. Yeah. Um, it's a different experience for every single person. So you can't just take that and apply that to your partner. It just, it will stress you out because now you start thinking that your partner wants, you know, 10 baby mamas and you're going to be the third one. And it's just, it doesn't apply to you, right? <laughs> just talk to your person. Focus on them and not other people. You you just, you'll save yourself so much time and stress. Like, I just... I'm so proud of you for getting to this moment. Yeah, it took a while. <laughs> and it doesn't have to take you this long. Honestly, mm. learn, learn from, from our mistakes, <laughs> right? And shift your focus back into your relationship. Yeah. It's how you find out <laughs> matters right because there's a lot of again misconceptions about what polyamory actually means right so if you found out by your partner just coming up and being like yo i think i'm polyamorous you know there's certain steps that you should go ahead and do together to figure out what that means for both of you and as individuals right but if you catch your partner cheating and then they say oh 
I think I'm polyamorous. Those two things need to be handled separately. Okay, cheating and polyamory are two different things that need mm. two very different solutions, okay? Monogamous people cheat. Polyamorous people cheat. Cheating is cheating, okay? There's this term that goes around. It's called what? Ethical mon- monogamy. Ethical, Ethical non- non-monogamy. Monogamy. And I personally hate that term. I haven't read much on it, but what I have seen on it, I'm not a fan of it because that implies there's something non-ethical. unethical about non-monogamy when there isn't. There's something unethical about cheating and betraying people, but non-monogamy as a thing in itself, there is nothing unethical about it, right? So, again, I would say if you found out through cheating, then handle those two issues separately, but if they just came out do this so one of the things that we really did um when we came together now was try to figure out what both of these terms mean for the both of us i think that was the first time i really had to question my okay not the first time but it was the first time i seriously questioned my monogamy because i think monogamy has been accepted as kind of like a default in society Mm. and it doesn't really have a good rep, <laughs> especially if you're like in the non-monogamous communities. It doesn't really, it's not great. Mm. Um, and that can be very difficult when you are a monogamous person, monogamish, um, and you're trying to learn new things with these people. Because sometimes it can just sound a little hurtful. Mm. And what I would suggest you do when it sounds a little hurtful, like not abusive, but just um, when it does sound hurtful, just take that and ask yourself why this hurts you. Mm. Do some introspective work and find out why these things that are being said about monogamy are hurting you and if whether they apply to you. Exactly. I think that's a good way to start just asking yourself whether you are really monogamous or you're, you're really choosing to be monogamous or if you're just going with society's flow. Mm. Definitely. I think, yeah, that's a good point because when we do look up these definitions and all this terminology, we forget that words aren't there to define us. Mm. You know, we use words to define ourselves. You're not supposed to shape shift and fit into the word. You know, you should just use words to describe what it is that you're feeling. And yeah, we're constantly creating new terms and new words. So it's going to evolve and change over time. And we should be open to that. Um, yeah, and there is a lot of terminology mm. in the polyamorous community, which I don't even know, you know. But I, but I, I do. do ex- <laughs> yeah, you did extensive research. But when things come up, I do look them up, and I'm like, oh, does this apply to me? Eh, no. And then I move on with my life. And if it does apply, I'm like, oh, why? What does it mean? And I communicate with my partner to let her know what this means. And if she comes up with any terminology, we sit down and we communicate, like, does it apply Should we learn about this? What does this mean for us? And we move together. Something that can happen in the beginning when you find out is that you'll probably want to talk your partner into giving into monogamy because Mm. it's safer. Mm. And I get that, you know, because you feel like it does, things don't have to change because you don't want to lose the person you love the most you know you love the most you love and i guess you also have to remember that they feel the same way they also don't want to lose the person that they love and then coming to you and telling you this if that's what they did um is them having showing trust and faith in you right and trying to be honest with you and being vulnerable with you yeah Um, so please don't try to drive them into a corner and force them to be to change um, to change (laughs) yeah um i doubt that will help them because they might feel rejected because you are rejecting who they are in a sense um change is a very personal and internal thing and just because you know they decide to be monogamous now doesn't mean you know they won't change their minds later you know maybe they also need time to kind of get used to this but don't delude yourself into thinking that yeah now that you know Um, you're monogamous, we have to forget about this poly thing. We can just put it behind us and not deal with it. It's a part of your life now. It's not going away and it's something you all need to get used to. Talking um, about. Talking about. 
Communication, obviously. No surprise here. We have a whole video on how to communicate. You can use some of the tips there. But something that would apply more to this topic is that it's okay to get deep in your emails. Are you happy that I'm using you? Okay. It's okay to get emotional. It's okay to go out there and let it all out. You know, you're gonna hurt each other. It hurts. It's a, it's a painful topic, you know. But you have to be willing to see the conversation through. And it has to be a joint effort. You can't be talking on your own. It needs to be a two-way communication stream. Okay. It's gonna take a while. We're still having this conversation. It's not cute. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes we laugh and other times we cry and that's just the cycle. It's a part of our lives now, <laughs> like you said. And sometimes it'll get so tiring, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> it's so tiring. So like it's something tiring. I just don't want to talk about. It, you you know? know, but if your partner is really feeling some type of way, you just have to be there and support them because it's not all your relationship. Like there's more to your person than just being polyamorous or being monogamous. They're an entire human being, and this is just one aspect of them. You know that shouldn't now dull everything that they are. And you're gonna need like a lot of patience because, like she said, you really are gonna have a lot of conversations. And the first few conversations are not really gonna go well. If they do, that's great. For us, not really. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's nah. so depressing. Yeah. Um, and you know, it just it gets easier. I hope it should be getting easier to talk about. Um, and if it doesn't, maybe consider leaving. I don't know. Um, mm. Both of you should. Or seeking outside help, like someone seeking, who is yeah. neutral. Yeah. Definitely. Communication is great, but it won't necessarily solve everything. Um, it'll make things clearer for both of you, mm. or three of you, for all both of, of you. you. Yeah, it'll make things clear for all of you as to like what you guys want and We're if you guys, doing. <laughs> or if you guys are willing to like you know make this work. Mm. And it's okay if you're not. Mm. Um, this doesn't make you a bad person. Um, or a person that loves your partner less. It's just that we all have different expectations of what we want our relationships to look like, and that's completely fine. Amen. Yeah. So when it comes to us, we really just had to find a structure that kind of worked for both of us. And constantly being <laughs> readjusting and checking mm-hmm. in to be like, oh, does this still work for you? You're still happy? You're good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, working out whatever wasn't, you know. And sometimes some things came up, you know, like points where we were cheating but didn't necessarily know that we were cheating you know but that's the topic we have in the next video so do check that out and if you haven't signed your lease yet please do subscribe like this video and watch this next